In this example, we're going to look at uh, some grades. We want to produce a histogram and a frequency uh, distribution table uh, for those grades. Of course, the first thing that we need to do is take the grades and wrangle them in a way that R can handle them. I'm going to use RStudio and, and the uh, editor in R. Of course, you could use any text editor to do this job. Luckily, the information that we have is in an electronic form. So we can uh, simply copy that and paste it into our text editor. And then we need to wrangle this data so that it's in a form that R can handle it. That means that we want to have this comma separated data and then we want to save it into an object. So to do that, let's, uh, let's find all the spaces and replace those spaces with a comma space. Let's do that to all of the data. There's 24 data points here. Let's work our way over to the start and uh, build an object. Maybe we'll call that object grades. Uh, we'll use the concatenate function just so that it's more readable in the script. I'm just going to break this up a little bit like this. R will still be able to handle that just fine. So I'd like to keep track of what I'm doing in the script. I'm going to annotate things with these hashtag uh, reminders, which R does not run. They just become comments. So let's run grades and see what we've got down here. Uh, let me pull this up so you can see it. <clears throat> that put things down in in uh, the console. So there's our, our grades. And if we look at that object, then it just shows the list of those 24 grades. Now it would make sense to, to make our classes here uh, to include where the grades would turn out. So for example, if it, all those grades that are less than 60 uh, 60, we'll put them into one group. Those between 60 and up to but less than 70 would like them into, to be in a group as well. So let's uh, begin to build those kinds of structures. So before we proceed, let's just study a little bit about our data. We could sort the data and uh, <clears throat> it looks like our low score is 40 and our high score is uh, is 90. Of course, we could have also asked for the min of grades, which is 40, and the max of the grades, which is uh, 95. Okay, so we're, we've got a feel for that. We want to go from 40 up to, to 95. So let's, uh, let's build our breaks in the following way. Okay, here's how I'm going to build the breaks. I want it to start at 40, and I want it to go up uh, to 60 would be the next break point, and then 70, 80, 90, and on up to 100. <clears throat> so I could, could start at 40. We're going to concatenate 40 along with this sequence that starts at 60 and goes to 100 in increments of 10. So let's look just real quickly at a histogram of the grades with those breaks that we just made and the right being false. So let's just highlight this real quickly and oops, let me highlight it all. Highlight that and run it. I could have just copied that and pasted it into the R console and that would produce uh, this. Sure enough, it looks like there's, there's three scores between 40 and 60. We can quickly check that in the grades. Uh, Let's see, did we sort the grade somewhere? Yeah, right here. Here's the grade sorted. One, two, three, between 40 and 60. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them uh, in the 60 range between 70 and 80. Notice that there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them there and, and so on. Now notice that it's giving us a density here instead of a, of a frequency. So let's uh, ask it to make that change. 
So I've added some things to our script. We might want to have the frequency equal true. That's going to give us a warning, but uh, it'll still produce a, a frequency instead of a density over here on the on the 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 y axis. Uh, it's always good to to label your graphs and label the x put a, a label on the x axis and on the y axis. Uh, let's let's put some color into this graph. Uh, so let's uh, run that and see where we stand. So now, now notice it gave us a warning message here because we're using that frequency as equal to true. But, uh, but there's the, the frequency histogram uh, with the labels in place. Okay, great. So let's worry about uh, creating a... a uh, frequency histogram, a frequency table. Um, so first of all, we'll, we need to assign each one of these values in grades, we need to assign it to one of the, the classes that are made up because of that break. Now what that particular function is, is the, the cut function is the one that does this job for us. So we're going to use the cut functions applied to grades uh, using those breaks that we created. And uh, the right is going to be false. That, what we mean by that is that if a score ends up on the right side of one of these classes, then it gets pushed into the next higher group. Um, and so there we're assigning grades. This object, the grades.fc, is, is a... Uh, uh, categorical variable. Let's run that for a minute. Now when you look at, at grades.fc notice that it for each one of the x values that we used to have it tells us what class that x value is going to be in. So what we want to do is build a table of that of that data which can be done with the table command and so now if we run our script then sure enough we get this table down here at the bottom the grades FC is a table it says that there's there's three items in uh, in that class seven in this class six in that next one seven and two and that agrees with the same information that we had in our histogram let me pull that back so you can see it together so there's the the histogram agrees with that table. Okay, that's it.